Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. Tisha here, back with another Sister Wise Season 17 review. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try to remain calm, but I just, I'm, I'm amazed at how calculating this bird has been from day one when she entered the family. McKelty has been a pawn for Robin from day one. And even to this point, I feel like the only person in Christine's part of the family that doesn't get that is McKelty, which goes to show you how much damage they've done. Christine had her 12-year-old daughter move in with Robin a few months before Robin moved to their part of Utah. She had her Moving with Robin, being a nanny and a maid, cleaning up and babysitting so that Cody could get his pencil wet, so that Cody could hang out and do the things that he wanted to do with the bird, so that he and his bird, who doesn't care about anyone other than herself, could enjoy their time together without the disruption of her three children. Christine at this time was pregnant with other children in the home and were, were, was requesting additional help. And she's sending kids away to help someone else, to help another lady and her bad behind kids. But he's the one who screams, the sacrifices I made to love you. What? This is unbelievable. She doesn't even seem to blame the feathered people. Instead, who she blames is her mom. I think that under it all, that McKelty, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong, I think McKelty has issues with her mom and McKelty plays both sides when it comes to her mom because she still has a little bit resentment there in regards to how she was treated by her mother when she was younger. She still has memories of being called the oddball or the problem child because that's the role at that time that she was playing. But she was a teenager and sometimes they go through spurts where they're not the easiest to deal with. And now I get even more why Robin and McKelty are so close. They're so close because Robin took advantage of this opportunity and she made McKelty feel special. McKelty went from having to share both of her parents with all of these kids to only having to share one mom with three other kids. And she probably got more one-on-one -on -one time with the bird and things like that because the other little kids weren't at the stage that McKelty was. And we know that McKelty uh, and a lot of Christine's children were mature. So there's certain things that they said and did that she wouldn't be able to do with her own kids. But <laughs> we're going to go ahead and get into it. So do me a favor and like the video as we begin. And I try to calm down. So we begin in St. George, Utah. <clears throat> Christine is at Tony and McKelty's apartment to help with their baby. We find out that at this point, it is her and Cody's what would be 27th anniversary, but we know that she's done. 
We're reminded that six weeks ago, she told Cody that she was going to be leaving and she was going to be moving back to Utah, meaning at this point in the show, he's had at least six weeks if he really wanted to work on things to try to work on things. But it gets worse because it's actually more time than that. Before she left to go to McKelty's, she told the Bald Eagle that she did not want to pretend for their anniversary because he asked her if um, they should make like some type of social media post or anything like that. And he was saying so that we can protect the kids, protect them from what exactly? From knowing the truth? This isn't about the kids. It's about Cody saving face. He said that her saying no for the first time made him realize that she was serious about where she stood. But he wants to keep testing it and seeing if she's really going to go through with this. He says that he just wants to know when she's going to realize that, you know, the life that she's looking to create somewhere else won't be better than what she's got. I want to know if he really believes that. Because if he did, boy, oh boy, was this a slap in his face. Boy, oh boy, was he wrong. He doesn't think, or he didn't think that she was serious. Despite her saying that she no longer wanted to be married to him. And despite her packing up all his things. And despite her saying that you are no longer wel welcomed in my room three months ago. Christine said she made that statement three months ago, but it took her not wanting to make a post, not wanting to celebrate their anniversary. And we see what that looks like riding around in the car with him to realize that she's serious. She says they had a lot of great moments and a lot of great times. And she's not going to say that she regrets this and she regrets that because she has her kids from it. She said, but from the moment that she's taken off her rings, she's felt relieved and she's felt good because those rings to her felt like a noose. The fact that she compared the rings on her fingers to a noose shows how bound, how restricted, how much being with Cody suppressed her and kept her in a state where she couldn't be who she truly is. She's tired of keeping sweet. He, um, her not having a legal marriage is helping her get out faster. She said, yeah, we're not legally married. We're spiritually married. But the way I look at it, I'm done. I don't know, you know, how we go about this. But my first step is to leave. She says that it was 26 years. They had good times. But the intimacy was gone and they weren't having relations. Cody says intimacy requires trust and attraction in his world. He thought she was being mean and angry. In other words, his bird told him that Christine was being mean to her, so he decided to punish her. But I don't understand how she could be mean when she did something as sacrificial to not just her, but to her kid. She put her kid in an unknown situation by having her live with Robin and take care of her kids. I just don't understand how we're how we're like zooming past this and why they waited until season 17 to tell us the real like truth about this situation. Because I thought this was she was staying with her when she was in Lehigh up the street or from what they say it wasn't up the street. It was actually 30 minutes away. But when she was living up the street, I didn't realize this was a thing where she was living four to five hours away and doing it. He says, Christine made him angry because she was unwinding plural marriage for him and unwinding his purpose. So your purpose in life was to just be married to multiple women? He said, so his thing to her was, we're not having intimacy until you get this straight. This wasn't about plural marriage. 
I don't even really feel like the bald eagle believes in polygamy. I think that the bald eagle wanted extra wives so he could have his ego stroked. I think that he wanted all these kids because he loves to feel doted upon. I don't think that he thought that at some point these kids would grow up and be independent thinkers. I think that he knew the moment that he married Robin that he no longer wanted to be a polygamist. But I think that because he had the show and because his act his bird actually wanted to be a part of this that that is why he's staying and trying to act like he believes it because he doesn't in my opinion but his bird does christine says looking at things now and having that noose off of her that the future is huge for her and she just wishes that she could go now but she cannot go now because she has to think about you know gwen and isabel and she wants to wait until they move out to go to college. So Cody says, Christine at this point hasn't even told her sister wise what's going on, but he bets all the kids know. Now, initially I had a problem with Christine telling some of the kids, but I have to remind myself, like some of you all have reminded me as well, a lot of the people that she's talking to are no longer kids, they're adults. And to be fair, there's a transition that happens when you become an adult with your parents. They're still your parent, but there are things that you begin to talk about that you may not have spoken about prior. So I don't blame Christine for having conversations with Maddie to make sure that she would be in a good place with her, even if she were to leave her father. Because best believe the same way that Christine was informing some of her children so they would be prepared so they could have time to process it before it got out on this television screen. I think that it was responsible of her to do that because we're hearing it filming. So her kids deserve to hear it before it gets to this situation, before it gets put on social media or before somebody else leaks it. I'm not mad at Christine for informing her young adult children of what's going on because he definitely told his bird. Look at how quick in season 19 that he told Janelle, who at the time he's barely talking to, speaking ill of, saying nasty things about. Look at how quickly he ran to tell Janelle that Mary and him are done, that Mary went and got a uh, release from the church. They're not even on good terms. So imagine how he is when they're on great terms. Video time. Cody and the wives get together for a conference, video meeting, Zoom, whatever it is. As they come on the screen, I cannot help but notice how happy Christine looks in comparison to these other ladies. She looks relieved. She looks excited she looks refreshed it's amazing what being away from the bald eagle does for one skin we saw it in season 19 with the bird she was gone away from um her husband for i don't know if it was a week or a couple days whatever but she was gone and she looked refreshed even though she was helping taking care of two babies the bald eagle drains cody smiles and says it's another c19 meeting Christine's like, yep, and it's important because the schools are at, um, opening back up. And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Christine's like, I'm not about to waste time. I just want to jump into this situation. But Cody doesn't have anything else to give us other than his pandemic talk. So he has to make sure that he does this whole thing because this meeting didn't have to be this long. But they love to hear themselves talk. Y'all, one thing about me is I hate meetings where we talk about what we're going to talk about. Let's just Let's just get to it. Don't waste people's time. Time is something that you can't get back. It bothers me, right? So Cody thinks that Christine is trying to take over the meeting just because she simply is trying to not waste time. After all, she is uh, there to help her daughter who is currently, you know, <laughs> giving uh, life, who's currently, bir not well, she's not birthing, she's laboring. So she don't got time to sit up here and be with you. She wants to make sure that she's there to support her daughter. So let's get this moving along. He says, Christine's trying to take over the meeting. She's an independent woman now. She has this attitude of, I don't need you guys anymore. So I'm basically gonna, you know, run this and I don't have to submit myself to what the group wants. Good for Christine. 
because Christine has had to submit herself to what the group wants for years. And she could have saved herself a lot of heartache and a lot of money if she would have stood firm into how she was feeling and if she would have not felt like she had to keep sweet and if she would have not stayed there for her children and if she would have not suppressed her feelings and ignored what her heart truly wanted, which was to get out. He lets us know that he hasn't seen any other of the other wives lately. So you're quarantining still. You're still not seeing other wives. We're still supposed to feel some kind of way about this. You still haven't even seen Mary, who's been quarantining, but we'll get to it. Janelle is, says that, you know, she's taking advantage of the fact that there are virtual classes. Savannah is doing school virtually. So her and Savannah are in North Carolina to enjoy time with Maddie, her husband, and the kids. She said, uh, Cody has opinions of her doing that. He has opinions of her traveling. But at this point, she's going to see her kids. I don't blame her. He then asked Janelle how North Carolina is and how Axel and Evie are doing. I don't think that this was for the show. I think that he was asking this because he genuinely doesn't know. I feel like if you called your kids, this is something that you would already know. But he doesn't make an effort to call them. He always expects for them to call him. And because of that, there are things that he just is not privy to. So you sitting up here asking about them, looking like you're just so excited to hear about them when you can easily video call Janelle, Maddie, Caleb. You can call Savannah, any one of them and find out. Shows how disconnected he is. The subject of McKelty comes up. The bird says she adores McKelty. McKelty came to live with her before she married Cody. When she said this, y'all, when she said this, because I, I did this part. I did this part of my notes before I did the other part of my, my notes. I thought, are you kidding me? Cody talks about the sacrifices and about how Christine was a bad sister wife and about how she never cared about Robin's children and about how she was mean and how she was inconsiderate and how it was always me, 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 me. And we hear this. And I'm starting to believe more and more that the things that he's putting on, on, on Christine aren't even Christine. It's his bird. His bird is inconsiderate. His bird is selfish. His bird is always me, 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 my, 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 my kids, my kids. That's how the situation goes. But we're going to sit here and we're going to act like it's just a situation where it's her. Are you kidding me? This is going to sound vulgar. And I don't even care. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but what did Robin do other than spend money, lay on her back, and open her legs. I'm sorry. I had to say it. What did she do? The moment that she entered this family, the bird added no value to anyone other than Cody. That is the only person that her being in this family benefited. The only person. It didn't benefit anyone else. It didn't. What did she do? They weren't allowed to, to benefit from her food stamps. They weren't allowed to hang out um, uh, in her kitchen. She wasn't watching them. She had her own nanny. 
She wasn't working. The only job that she ever had was this show and the sister wife's closet. So what exactly did she add to this family other than to be what the bald eagle wanted? Which was to fulfill that intimacy that he wasn't giving to anybody else. Because I don't care what Janelle says. I don't think that their stuff was all that great either. I think that Cody is too selfish to be a good lover. But enough of that. This is what happens when I get off my page. My bad. <laughs> uh, McKelty was Robin's nanny when she was, what, 12 or 13? So because she did something for Robin, because that's what this, this polygamy thing is about. If you do something for me, then you're okay by me. So because she did something for Robin, because Robin took advantage of the situation, because at that young age, McKelty wanted attention and acceptance so badly because she felt like an outsider, Robin was able to slide in there and matter more than some of the other moms. And now she's invited to this birth of her baby. Christine tells them about how McKelty's doing, about how great she's doing and how chilled she is. Meanwhile, Tony is nervous. They talk again about home births and all that other stuff. We've heard that situation so many times. I'm not going over it. They talk about COVID and what the kids are going to do for school. Most of the kids want to continue virtual learning. A lot of the kids, they want to stay virtual. So Christine is like, you know, it's senior year and Isabel wants to go back. She's going to be leaving after graduation. So she's only going to have a few more weeks with her friends, which makes me feel like at this point, they're into the new year. They're probably, because Janelle later says something about it's about to be spring. So at this point, they're probably like in March. She wants to go back and be with her friends. Christine says, okay, so if she does go back to school, does that mean that you won't be coming over? What does it mean about you coming over? What would that look like? And Cody immediately hates the idea of her going back. And so does the bird. She's trying so hard, but I can see right through her, her as she's sitting on that screen. Because as soon as Christine says that Isabel's going back and Cody starts talking, the bird is like, like she is blinking, 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 blink, 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 blink. She, is <laughs> she is blinking her tail off to the point where I'm like, okay, is there an eyelash in your eye? Like, what is going on here? Why are you blinking so much, Birdie? But it's because, it's because she's uncomfortable and she's probably fuming inside because she doesn't want Isabel to go back. And as usual, he makes this whole situation about him, saying that he's made it very clear. If the kids are around people and if they go back to school, that he's probably not going to see them because he won't risk it. Christine doesn't like what he's saying. Janelle doesn't like, he's saying, like what he's saying. And Mary, even though she's not saying much of the time, she seems like she doesn't like it either. Janelle says she doesn't like that he won't see... Isabel, if she decides to go to school, he says, look, I had a talk with Isabel. I kind of had an idea that she wanted to go back to school. If her friends are more important to her, then that's her choice. She can go back. It's always if somebody else is more important. It just, he's so inconsiderate. He does not think about his kids. He doesn't. Because I, here's the thing. I think any of us who had children in school while the pandemic was going on, we can all relate to the fact that it was a really, really hard decision to decide what our kids were going to do. I know for me, originally, they had the kids not go for an entire year, I believe it was. Yeah. And then when they did go back, they started off the school year where they were going like one set was going one week and another set was going another week or you could just have them stay at home. But it didn't start initially. It didn't really happen until like around, I, I believe it was like around uh, February. 
of the following year. And I remember how hard it was for me to decide to allow my son to go back to school because I, I was scared of what would happen. Because even though there were times where I was going to work, he was still at home and I felt like he was safe in this little bubble. But you can't get mad at people for making whatever decision that they decided to make in regards to that. And it, Cody just wants to be mad. He, he just wants to be mad. He says, Janelle and Christine at this point are trying to catch him in, in his hypocrisy, like they want to pin him down or something. So he's being very careful about what he says. That's not what they're trying to do. What they're trying to do is to have you not penalize Isabel because she wants to go back to school. Because they know how you operate and they know how you think. Janelle's like, okay, Cody, when are we going to go back to things being normal? When are you going to go back to functioning normally? She's like, look, she tells us, I know that I'm crossing the line at this point, but I'm frustrated because I feel like he's making all these excuses when if that's the case and he doesn't want to go in the house or whatever else and he wants to, you know, be safe, then get your kid and go to see her in the backyard. Here's my thing. At this point, there were things that they could have done like tests because we know testing is available where Cody could have decided if he really, really wanted to, to stay at Christine's house for a couple of days, meaning have them do a test and then stay. He could have alternated every other week if he wanted to, but if it requires effort, he's not willing to do it. You can be around a production team you can be around the nanny. You can be around certain people when it's convenient. When it was convenient for you, everybody had to go and get testing to come to Ariella's birthday. But you can't go and inconvenience yourself by getting a, a test done and having your daughter test so you can see her just because she wants to go back to school and enjoy what's left of her senior year. Come on. He says things will get back to normal when he feels confident that he won't get or give this thing to anybody else. He says, when they talk, I just instantly hear a snotty attitude from them and their sarcasm. That's what I hear from Janelle and Christine. He's not worried about himself. You then have the bird. You know, in my head, Cody's relationship, you know, with the kids, you know, with his kids is more important than anything else. You know, I understand. I, I understand Isabel's desire to return to school, but I'm really, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really concerned about this. And it's something that I just find really, really, really stupid. Which part is stupid? Is Isabel wanting to go back to school stupid or is Cody not wanting to see her stupid production do your job and ask her that question please because inquiring minds want to know I'm part of that I want to know Mary is like okay so where is Elzebel now is she with you and Christine's like no her and Gwen are home her and Gwen are home but Cody hasn't seen her Cody then says, you know, I, I want to go over there and see them, but she she went up to the school. Did she get a test? Christine says, she's waiting on you. Christine tells us that she told Cody when he's ready to go over to see Gwen to make sure that he calls so that Gwen can get the test done. Told She told Gwen the same thing. Cody never called and said he was coming over. So Gwen and, and um, Isabel didn't go get the test. Cody gets mad at Christine because she didn't tell Isabel to go and get a COVID test. And he says that's her job. It's her job to make things easier for him. But she's not doing it. It's not her job anymore, you douche. God forbid you're actually a father and you actually do something other than, I don't know, just show up for a couple hours and think that you've done something. Christine tells him like, look, Isabel is 17 years old. 
She has the app. She can book her appointment. The bird then starts talking and she lies. And her and Cody didn't talk about this before they got on screen or he forgot. Because she's like, you know, I didn't decide what I was going to do. Um, yet I wanted to see what everybody else had to say. Because that's what she does. She always waits on everybody else. And based on her husband's reaction, that determines what she's going to do. Which is why she never got lumped into her not wanting the one house when we know she didn't want the one house. But let me continue. I just decided that I'm going to wait and I'm going to see what everybody else wants to do. But it kind of sounds like what we're doing here is, you know, that, you know, the kids aren't going to go to school. But then Cody tells us the truth. Because like Janelle said, he leaks. And he says, well, you know, I I specifically asked Brianna and Saul not to go back to school in person so I could be around them. Which immediately bothers Christine. Because Christine is like, okay, so you care so much about being around those kids and spending, I'm, I'm rewording this, y'all. You care so much about being around those kids and spending time with those kids that you can make yourself available to them and you can call them and ask them to, to, or I'm sorry, not call. You can tell them and ask them not to go to school so that you can see them. But you can't speak to Isabel and, and do the same thing. She says, Isabel would love a call from her dad saying, could you please not go back to school so I can see you? Can you please not go back to school so I can spend time with you? Can you please get COVID tested so I can see you? This is when Cody tells us, she's yeah she's saying that but you know it's different i i spoke with isabel isabel is more social than brianna so there's a difference there brianna's not social that has nothing to do with the situation you still didn't try the wives aren't buying it they think that he should go and see isabel at least that's what mary janelle and christine feel janelle's like he could go see her in the backyard if he really wanted to see her. He's saying it's an inconvenience because it's not warm. And Janelle's like, okay, this isn't okay. It's your kid. The weather is getting better. Go and see her. Anybody else who really cared that much about seeing their kids would have made whatever sacrifice to sit on the porch. Even if that meant going out and buying one of those heaters and putting out. They would have done something to make sure that they could be with their kids. He just is excuse after excuse after excuse. Because he's like, it was just snowing. Janelle's not trying to hear it. He then brings up... You know, how different it is, you know, that when truly, when he goes to see truly, truly so excited to see him and it's just different. And then he says, you know, when it comes to the smaller children, he wants to make sure he puts in an effort. The smaller children help pad his ego. It's always about him. It's never about his kids. When it comes to parenting, especially when they're adolescents, when they're minors, I feel like in life, period, most of the time, you're going to put your kids before yourself. I know I've done it. There's times where I want to do something as simple as go on a vacation. And I said, oh, recently, I so wanted to go with my friends because they're all going to turn to dad next month but next month you know what's also happening i have a son that's turning 18 christmas is right around the corner i just bought a car like there are things that have happened that are not permitting me to go on that trip because i got to make sure my kid is good and that's what parenting is it's putting your child sometimes before yourself but he's incapable of doing that he doesn't do it he think the kids are around for him. He's horrible. Cody says teenage parent, teenage kids don't need him. They don't need parents. The younger kids do. And Mary's like, you know, I don't under. She doesn't say it in that moment, but she says it in confessional. I don't understand Cody. And I don't think he understands that all of his kids need him, whether they're young or old. And that's what the problem is. The bird's like, you know, I don't agree with Cody in this moment. I don't, you know, I think kids need their parents for the rest of their lives. And I know for a fact that some of the older kids need their dad. Which older kids? Yours? 
because it seems to go out the window when you think of the others. Tell him that, bird. He likes to listen to you. Janelle's like, look, I'm getting off this thing. I got to go help with the kids. I hear some kids crying. She's done with the conversation. Everyone agrees that they'll talk about it later. It's over. Mary. Mary is on her way to go see her mom. Her mom is 76 years old and she's been in the hospital for the past two days having a heart attack. She's coding and her goal is to get there. She's in the car. She calls Cody, lets him know that she's on her way up there. And about an hour after she's on the road, she gets a phone call from her sister saying her mom didn't make it. Cody and all the sister wives talk about the fond memories of Mary. Christine, her mom, talk, Christine talks about how, you know, when her mother left the church, that Bonnie was instrumental in urging her to reconcile with her mom despite her leaving the church. That her mom and uh, Bonnie's mom were close. They all talk about how they miss her. We see Mary crying. I was crying with Mary. Just because if you've ever lost anyone close, you all remember what that phone call is like when you find out that your loved one is, is gone. <sighs> Takes me back. Uh, Mary is so hurt, she doesn't know what to do. She says her mom was giving and amazing. She was, you know, a first wife. And over the years, a couple of the wives left and it was hard on her mom. Uh, she wanted to grow old with the other wives. She doesn't know about the rest of her life and what that's going to look like or what's going to happen with the B&B &B because her mom has always been there. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> oh, I wasn't expecting that. Mm. Y'all, we've lost so many people. <laughs> We've lost so many people over the last couple of years and I I see Mary up there crying and stuff. And it just reminds me that sometimes you don't even really get to process it because you just you got to hurry up and just deal. And when you do it, grief comes in waves and I just I feel badly for Mary because she was sitting there losing time with her mom. She could have been with her mom this whole time and she lost out on all this time with her mother because a man that was so inconsiderate of her had her quarantining in hopes that she would be able to see this family once every couple months. It's ridiculous. Mm, 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 mm. That call. Oh, I remember, I remember that call. Okay, let's get to something lighter. Baby time. McKelty is in labor. Robin can't be there, so Christine is putting her on a conference call because she wanted to be there. McKelty doesn't feel comfortable with her father being in the room. I wouldn't either. So, and I love my dad, but I don't need you to see my coochie. <laughs> my poom poom. I don't, I don't need you to see that. <laughs> crying one minute and then here talking about I don't want you to see my cookie the next <laughs> y'all this is me this is real me this is real life like this is what I do <laughs> okay so she doesn't feel <laughs> she doesn't feel comfortable having her father there <laughs> now nah, it's happy tears <laughs> <laughs> okay, she's she's closer bonded with Christine and Robin, so she wants them to be there. Tony is nervous because the whole home birth thing. She had like 22 hours, I think, of labor. Christine says McKelty is tired. Every time she goes into contractions, Tony is massaging her. Her water broke, so she is progressing now. This is a home birth. There's no medication. Uh, McKelty is getting close. Um, the baby's head is out. The cord is wrapped around her. 
the heartbeat is lowering, but they get it off. The baby is born all is well. We find out that McKelty only pushed for 10 minutes and the baby's name is Avalon Asa, or is it Asa? Avalon uh, Padron. Everything goes well. We hear from the bird, even though she's not my biological kid, she's mine. That is a blessing I get because of plural marriage. And I really, really love that. And Christine says, you know, it's wonderful to watch this. This is a beautiful thing. She's so excited for her newest grandbaby. She's also excited because Tony and McKelty are going to make great parents. And that's how it ends. Y'all let me know what you thought of this episode. If there's something that I forgot please put it down below. Sorry about my little moment, but one thing that I'm always going to be up here is honest and in all fairness, that's something about that that Mary situation. It just struck me. Um, I've said it before. We have to cherish, you know, our people while they're here because tragedy strikes at um, any minute. And one thing that I know that uh, the pandemic has taught us all is to really make sure that we're loving on and we're appreciating our loved ones because we just never know, you know, when one of us may go. I love you all. Thank you so much. Until next time.